Okay. Well, we're officially on episode one of Sam Sketch Stories. Here's what we're gonna do. I did some sketches since the first pilot episode or episode 1.0, but this is actually officially episode like one. I did some sketches still, um, but mainly I was working, I'm working on, um, I'm actually working on something for school. Um, it's going to be an animation. Yeah, well, what we're gonna get, I, I have a whole, there's gonna be a whole episode about that, um, but it's a really interesting episode. So when I put that together, it's, it's, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be awesome. And it's something I'm really proud of and that I'm gonna be super excited to share. It's gonna be like a little, yeah, I'm not gonna say much, but um, let me sharpen my pencil first. And this episode is not gonna be as long as the first, but that's like I said, because I am a busy person. But it's cloudy, it's rainy. And one conversation that I would have with a lot of people is like, why do we feel like sometimes we feel like we're a lot more sad on days where it is like raining and stuff like that. Like, uh, like days where it's more, like days where it's more like drower and stuff like that. And it's like, Oh, like it's cloudy, it's rainy outside. Sometimes my mood just gets affected by that. And because it gets affected, it's like, oh yeah, I just feel like a bit worse today. Not because like I'm genuinely like in a horrible mood or anything, or it's like I hate everything around me. It's like my patience gets smaller or lower based off of what's like going on or just based off the weather. See, I wasn't kidding when I said like, <laughs> I wasn't kidding when I said that me talking to you guys like while I draw, like me talking to you people is gonna be very similar to like how you talk to me in the real world because you're, you're seeing all like my fucking mannerisms and stuff like that and just like, you know, I'm just, ah, I have, there's no direction. There's no direction when it comes to this stuff. We are going to draw some things and I want to try to learn how to get out of my comfort zone. So I'm finding something to kind of draw. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Um, we are going to draw, you know, I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to pick something. So I'm at that stage of art where I'm still like learning a bunch and I want to learn like different types of styles and just learn how to get a grasp of everything. Cause I'm not like really that good yet i'm still like learning i'm a learning person so i want to see if i can find something a reference to kind of go off of where i can kind of like you know borrow elements from the reference and you know what i'm just going to keep it simple we are going to do yeah screw it yeah okay we're gonna draw we're gonna Whatever I am pointing at in the screen is going to be what I'm drawing. So you're going to see the picture right here. But I am going to go ahead and just look at the image and kind of zoom in. And we're going to just kind of draw this. Today is the fifth. How do I know it's the fifth? Because I have homework due on the sixth. And that's one day before my homework is due and I'm cooked. Um... <laughs> It's cryptography, and I am not a math person. Or, I mean, look, I fuck with Gravity Falls, but like, goddamn, like, I, I can't, I, I am not, I am not all about like block, like, like just discovering stuff. It's just like, oh, okay, like that's kind of cool. Um, but I'm gonna go out of my way. This is so nerve wracking, actually. Let me just, let's just do it. Doing a little bit of the ghosting method. I could always clean stuff up. See, I have a rule usually when it comes to like sketching things out where I usually just don't use an eraser or like a kneaded eraser. I don't use one when I'm sketching in my sketchbook because I like to kind of, not like to, but I want to kind of discipline myself to like fix my mistakes or to try to like work with my mistakes. And because like if I have an eraser, 
then it's going to be like I'm gonna feel more compelled to just like fix things always and it'll just kind of look like a little bit of a mess at least at this stage so I want to like give myself discipline um This is actually a lot more nerve-wracking than the first one. The first one was recorded, like, later in the night. So, like, literally, like, 3 a.m. on some Patrick Star shit. Where it's like, oh, boy, 3 a.m. Like, like, type shit. So, um, it's like, <laughs> I have got to stop staying up late. I don't, I, I always, I, I try to, like, not stay up too late. But, like, there are moments where, like, I either sleep in, like, the, during the day or I just get so exhausted, so tired of everything that I just go to sleep and then like I wake up and it's like, oh, it's it's the, it's the late night. And like one thing is that like I like talking to my friends sometimes and or I just like talking to people and stuff like that, whether it be like in person or like, you know, like on the interwebs. But what I will say is this, um, usually with how I sleep there are moments where it's like I want to talk to somebody right and then like I get tired and everything I just forget everything and I just go to sleep and then boom I wake up and then like I'm up but all my friends are asleep I'm like fuck like you know what I'm saying like it's just like uh the pain the agony how could this be my life <laughs> I I can't believe this is my life LeBron James <laughs> um can't believe this is my life man uh but yeah like um <laughs> my hair is getting longer y'all can't see it but my hair is getting longer it's almost getting to the point where like it's starting to actually kind of obstruct my view just a little bit which i kind of think is cool but also really annoying at the same time like i don't know if any of y'all have like dreadlocks people who who like know me who haven't seen me in a while yeah i have dreadlocks now um i've been growing them out for a little while um i was and the reason is because like I had these two strand twists that I would always like have, but then I just didn't know what to do with it. You know what? I'm busting out the eraser. I, I can't. Mm -mm. I, I'm sorry, gang. I'm, I'm sorry, gang. I have to get. I have to pull out the needed eraser, y'all. Sorry, gang. <laughs> I have to I have to break my own rule because like that was there's no way that that was gonna work with 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 the with the way things were going I don't think it would have worked I just need to kind of I need to know when to pull out the need to, to need the eraser not overuse it so it's like if it's like a mistake or if I draw something and I think it looks a little off then it's like oh right but if I draw something that could make the entire like structure of the drawing like messed up after that point it's like oh, okay. That's the one thing about trying to grow as an artist. You, you feel like, um, I'm going to do my best to also make sure. Cause like the thing is like, you know, like, like it's not the night. So like people are going to be up. So if there is a lot of noise, what I might do is I might just cut it out. I might cut out some parts of the video if need be this is i'm trying my best not to be like too fast I'm trying my best not to like really rush the drawing the thing is i got like work soon so it's like i want to be able to like at least get a drawing in before work um not counting like any school assignments or anything like that but um we talked about last time i think it was just it was just like an introduction on stuff and i was just rambling it was like 3 a.m a 3 a.m ramble so um today you know what i'm just gonna be blunt i'm gonna have a conversation with myself y'all gonna have that conversation with me but let's talk about media consumption <laughs> at least in the case of the artist i will admit i get too comfortable with my media consumption to the point where like i don't think i consume enough i have like a problem where i like hearing about content and stuff like that but like to go as far as to watch it sometimes i do but then i start and then i just either don't finish or i forget about it or i wait until it's over and it's like oh like 
Let me go ahead and see if I can just make the head bigger because I think the head will just need to be a little bigger. I think that's something I could probably adjust. Just get the rest of the body out of the way. Um, like, for example, like with certain shows, people talk about them and stuff like that. I'm like, oh yeah, that's cool, right? But then like, if I say like, oh, I haven't watched XYZ show, I'm afraid that I'm going to get cooked. It's not that I don't want to watch it. It's just that I want to, but sometimes I just don't have... I go ahead and like, and I don't know if this is a good or bad thing in retrospect, but I want, I kind of wanted to, I, I, I spend that time that I could have been using to watch something and I either A, don't watch it because I'm doing something else or I'm on YouTube or whatever the hell, or I'm making music, or I'm creating something and then I don't have time to watch something or I pick the worst times to want to watch something and and I get behind and then having conversations about like oh I didn't know this happened or whatever and it just becomes more awkward it's just oh, you know and like I just feel there's a lot of times where I genuinely feel bad I was like oh I should I should tap in I'm missing out on the era I'm missing out on something great but then like oh but music it's like you know I could always make music This is this is really out of my comfort zone considering how god awful this looks, but Okay, it's not god awful. I'm trying. I'm trying, but for anyone who does art, I'm doing a lot of chicken scratchers and that's not a good habit. Let me try to see if I can implement more comfort confident lines. And watch me fuck up from here. Oh, wait. Okay. I go ahead and just fix those lines. Something could something could work. Hold on, something could work out of this. Oh, this is so scary. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> like shout out to Cyan Saru. Like I'm gonna keep saying this, but shout out to any like animators or animation studios. Because the work they have to do is, like, absolutely maddening. Like, in order for a show like Scott Pilgrim Takes Off to happen, the amount of, like, energy and just necessary things that needed to happen to make this show exist, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm just so glad it happened, you know? Like, I hope to God that there's a season two, but I'm also glad that they made it self-contained because the state of, like, the, at least, like, current animation industry is just garbage that's i think that's a consistent thing like there's just going to be some there's just going to be certain topics that i will not delve into they're like oh you could talk about this and like you know but nah nah there's just certain topics that i don't want to delve into because i'm um, i don't want to like you know spend five hours yapping about the same shit but what i will say is this i mean i'm hopeful that things will change i'm hopeful you know but at the same time, like, you know, a lot of people are like telling me when it comes to like what I want to do, it's like, oh, you should, oh, you know what, like what you're doing is a good thing. And it's like, I know, but like, I want to create and that's like the thing I want to do. But at the same time, I feel like I've, 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 I'm a bit too late. And I, I watched this interview by Toby Jones. He made AJ's Infinite Summer and is working on a student film or uh, not student film is working on his own uh live action film uh that's based off of aj for context aj is like an actual person so it's like he doesn't have to worry about like the copyright <laughs> or whatever but yeah like um so i listened to the interview dog was on regular show at like 22 23 i'm about to turn 22 in a month and I hear stuff like that. I'm like, I know the industry is like different than it used to be because like they needed people, right? But sometimes I think to myself, damn, I need to do something with my life for real. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, but you make music. I'm like, I know, but, but like, I need to like, like, I don't know. Sometimes I feel really behind. 
like I don't like the idea of me feel, feeling behind because growing up I always kind of felt a little behind you know I mean people that people that like you know talked about me but negatively or just bullied me like kind of made that evident but I always kind of felt behind to this day sometimes I feel like oh I should have I should have you know what I'm saying like that whole like mind set that says like oh I should have I should have I should have but like everyone has their own story and everyone's story has like different points to it but sometimes I'd be forgetting that everyone has different cards sure like people have been people in the industry like come in they break in they make shows at freaking 21 22 23 i'm like damn like that's so crazy but then i remember like oh but they've been creative for the entire for like their entire life you hear their stories like oh since i was a kid i used to watch this and i would try to draw the frame from it it's like oh that's where it came from and I, I was creative when I was a kid, too. I drew on the walls <laughs> a little bit. I tried drawing on the walls a little bit. But I should have. I feel like I feel like I should have, like, maybe did a little bit re more research on how to draw. Sometimes I feel like, oh, if I just started off in, like, middle school, if I, if I like, said, like, hey, like, if I talked to, like, my friends that knew how to draw and be like, hey, how do you draw? No, I did that. I did that and I just didn't feel like it. I regret it. <laughs> I'll say, I regret it now. I regret it now. My girlfriend showed me her drawings when she was like a little, uh, when she was a little kid. Um, sort of my, like from back then. And like, she was like copying frames and stuff like that. And even at a young age, like she drew stuff pretty well. She knew how to like copy things beat by beat when she was like young. I'm like, oh my God, like, that's crazy. Cause I'm just trying to learn how to do that now. I don't like, just to like, at least develop a style and get practice. Cause look at, look at this line. Look at this line. Look how wiggly, wiggly jiggly this line is. Oh God, Lee, this is horrible. But like I said, we're getting out of the comfort zone today. And I decided to just like pick something that isn't as easy to draw. I could try to fix those lines. Let me stop putting myself down real quick. I keep doing that. That's a problem of mine. I should be proud of the fact that I even have the motivation to just draw every day, no matter how the day's going. Like, I kind of felt a little, um, I kind of felt a little, like, you know, just gray because the skies are gray today. I think that's an interesting thing about me. I, I've, like, consistently, almost every day that I, like, if I didn't hang out with a friend or do something, and the skies were gray, I would just be in a not really great mood. Unless something really good happened that day. And it's like, oh, the, what happened literally trumps what happened. Or, like, what happened literally trumps, like, my bad feeling because of the weather. It's like, oh, yeah. <sighs> Do y'all ever, like... Well, actually... Um, let me think. Do y'all, oh my God, this looks horrible. This looks horrid. In fairness, the reference photo is not necessarily in the highest resolution. And, but I kind of want to work with that. So just gotta give myself a little bit of a challenge. I have with the guitar. Let's, let's keep, let's keep cooking. Um... <laughs> Like two thousand years later, or something. Um, jeez, I, I shout out. So the guitar is oh, and that's another thing I gotta work on proportions. Oh, you know what? We're thugging it out. <laughs> we're we're thugging it out. We're gonna make it work. We're gonna make it work. I'm, I'm gonna try to make it work. This is why I want. This is why I kind of want this. To exist because there are people who are just like me who 
are trying to learn they're trying so hard to learn and they feel discouraged because they see content and the content has people who are really good at drawing and like there's like people that don't have like enough like they have bad drawings but they don't show anyone but i kind of want to be an exception to that rule so i can help motivate others it's like hey look at me i'm suffering but this is just a part of the process and if i grow that's a win that's a win for me and that's a win for you because it's like oh so now i now you know that you can do it too it's like you can do it too like like me and you and sabu my fool yo what the fuck how am i supposed to draw this This is a lot more just, I just feel a lot more like comfortable recording this. Like I'm just genuinely like talking, like I'm just like calling a ghost, like like talking to, it's all like talking to a ghost or something like that. It's like chicken scratches are all over. Well, this, okay. The chicken scratches don't look horrible until we get to the guitar, but I've, I don't really draw hands. The hands look horrendous. We gotta do this. <laughs> we gotta do this, gang. We got to. We got to. My friend says it all the time. We have got to. <laughs> My best friend says it all the time. We're like, we, we've got to. Like, I'm gonna try to have a little collab, maybe. Um, maybe, maybe. Um, And the collab, I'm not gonna say who it's gonna be for, because I don't want to like make any promises. And where the person like, nah, we can't, like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want to have a collab with somebody that I'm familiar with, somebody that, somebody who's like, you know, who I'm, who I'm close with, you know, somebody I can consider a real good buddy of mine, who is working on something very, very like similar, but not just in drawing. It's like, it might be a shorter episode or it might be like, it might be happening. Like, let's, long story short, I'm going to be really busy. Um, this Friday, I'm going to go travel and I'm going to travel with me and, and like some other friends. So let's be honest, I got to get out the crib. <laughs> I can't stay in the crib and do the same old school work loop that is draining me. I want to just like get out of the crib because I realize like people are getting out the crib, which means I have to get out the crib. No ifs, ands, or buts. I have to. Because I remember listening to an interview. I'm going to bring up another interview. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to bring up another interview. Yeah, yeah, what you going to do about it? Nothing. I remember seeing another interview by Owen Dennis. And... I'm I'm <laughs> I'm not going to repeat what he said word for word bar for bar but what I will say is that he his point that he's trying to make is people who are creating things if you need if you're going through creative burnout do something else don't just doom scroll on Twitter don't go on Instagram and look at how everyone else is living their great old fantastic lives do some shit and that's kind of like what he alluded to. Um, he said it in a really crazy way that I'm like, oh my God, like that, that was funny. But like, I, I, I can't repeat it. <laughs> I can't repeat what he said, but it's a, it's a really funny line. Um, but he said like, you know, if you ever feel like you're just being drained creatively, just do something have a trip and put your stuff away put your phone away or at least use your phone as little as you can because the thing is like like i'm a teenager like late teens early adult like okay early adult i'm a, I'm a young adult young adult not even a teenager no more i'm an adult for real and like you know it sucks but like 
in order for me to contact people, we need to have phones, right? <laughs> like, <clears throat> we need to have phones. And the thing is, like, we can't, like, have a moment without the phones because what happens if somebody important needs to contact us and like, oh, it's like, you know, important. Like a lot of us have our work schedules on our phones. A lot of us have like, you know, just we need to have email access to email. stuff like that is like, you know, some of some of the times we don't we don't even have access to like some people don't even have access to their schedules without a phone. And because of that, like it's it's really like hard for people to just simply go without a phone like even to log in to do homework oh oh you gotta log in oh yeah you need 2fa boom uh where 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 the where the uh 2fa at come on like let's let's, let's talk about it like where your passcode at boy like where, where your where your authentication at boy and it's like oh <laughs> you know what i'm saying so like the sad thing is that like right now like we we need phones and with that but but there but there comes the flip side it's like oh despite us needing phones it's like oh god this oh oh i'm oh mm, mm. let me try to fix this this is gonna either go really good or really bad i'm gonna try to fix something right here Okay, and then, uh, okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah, we'll just we'll just thug it out like this. This is horrendous. <gasps> ah, no. <laughs> this is one song. This is one song I listened to some years ago. I forgot the name. But like there's one person where it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> he just says like yeah. And ever since then, <laughs> I would sometimes like say that as a joke. Like me and my friend would say that as a joke. And like like if I if something bad happens, I'm like, no. <laughs> oh my god. This is as raw as it gets, gang. Like like th this is like me. I'm not kidding when this when you like you're actually having a conversation with me or you're just listening to me app like this is just real me this is not no like this is not no YouTube personality like hey guys cool drawing art fifty five here back with another video we are gonna take a look at Clip Studio Paint for the iPad Pro let's go like like no nah, this is I I'm I can't like I'm not that type of YouTuber because if I was I would be I would be censoring this part where I where I messed up. <laughs> but no, you're gonna see me make all my mistakes. You're gonna see me. You're gonna see me butcher everything I do, and you're gonna see me correct my mistakes. Right? There we go. So, anyways, um, I haven't. When you're by the time I'm recording this, I haven't even uploaded or uh, posted the first pilot episode yet. So by the time y'all, you know, by the time you see this, that episode would have came out. I wonder how the reception is. If no one viewed it, that's awesome. If people viewed it, that's awesome. The the whole story of the day is that I had the I had the courage to post it, and I was like, screw fear. I didn't scrap it. <laughs> I don't like scrapping things at all. I hate having to scrap things. I try to make sure to get as things as done as possible or just make sure make something out of it. Cause if I like scrap something, it's like, oh, lost media. And then people be like, hey, whatever happened to that? You know, I hated that feeling like being like, oh yeah, you know this thing that was gonna happen? Did it actually happen? Did it never happen? Like, <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't want to put people in that. And then, what else did I want to say? Oh, yeah. Yo. R.I.P. to the creator of um, The Backyardigans. Um, Janice, Bur uh, Janice uh, Burgess. Yeah, Janice Burgess. Um, or Burgess. Janice Burgess. R.I.P. Janice Burgess, man. 
by the time you're watching this, um, Akira Toriyama, who is the creator of Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, uh, Sandland, you know, all that really cool stuff, also passed away before I recorded this episode. It's crazy because both the creator of Backyardigans and the creator of like Dragon Ball and all these really cool things just like died within the same month of March, which is so crazy. Um, I do want to say something about that, like Dragon Ball, without going into too much detail, um, Dragon Ball, um, when I was introduced to it, Dragon Ball Z, I was introduced to it when I was like in kindergarten by a family friend of mine. And from that point on, just my perception of just like animation, especially like anime just changed. And I would have like really fun, impactful moments. Like I remember going outside with my PSP, we played the Dragon Ball games on there. And it was just, just a really cool, amazing experience. And I'll just be blunt right now. I never really watched the series in full, not from beginning to end, but I've seen like episodes, I would see clips, I would watch some bits and pieces of it, and I enjoyed like every second of it. So yeah, R.I.P. Akira, Akira Toriyama, R.I.P. Janice Burgess, you know, but let's just, let's just think about this. Like, let's like, let's just be blunt. You know, they have crazy legacies. They made their mark on us. And I think that should be something that we should all strive for to make a positive impact on, you know, our community, on society, for creativity. That should be, I feel like that should be, you know, the objective of artists so we can leave an impact. You know what I'm saying? Like leaving an impact like Satoshi Cohen, leaving an impact like Hideki Anno leaving an impact like Ian James Cordy, Owen Dennis, you know what I'm saying? Just leaving an impact on creativity and the industry and people, people. That's the most important part. Okay, uh, back to the episode. I hope you're all enjoying it, by, by the way. Okay, uh, Future Sam out. When I heard the news, I fell to my knees, gang. I ain't gonna hold you because like Backyard Games was so... That show was ahead not only ahead of its time but it's the example of like how overproduction is a great thing for kids shows or for preschool shows fun fact she actually i think she was the vice president of nick jr at one point which is why a lot of the shows that were on nick jr had a very similar feel to each other um like she worked on little bill i know she did she create Gullah Gullah island I don't think she created it, but she worked on it. Okay, she worked on Gullah Gullah Island. I did not see a lot of Gullah Gullah Island growing up because I was, like, born literally right when that show, like, was, like, been ended and, like, they don't rerun it as much. Like, it was like, oh, yeah, like, you can watch it if you find it, but you but you couldn't. Like, if it wasn't accessible to me via TV, I I, I could not watch it, gang. I, I, back then, like, if it was not, if it was not accessible on TV... And if it wasn't on early YouTube or early Vimeo, because it was like, hey, I used Vimeo, I used Daily Motion, like all those things, then I just wasn't viewing it. And like by the time, by the time I had like easy access to the internet, I didn't, I wasn't like watching a lot of preschool shows anymore. But but anyways, back to back to the topic at hand. Yeah, no, nah, R.I.P. She had a huge impact on a lot of our childhoods, and whether, no matter like where. There was a point where like no matter where you're from no matter like what you do no matter how you are today i think it can be consistently said that like i like backyard games like was one of the best like preschool shows of that time like nick jr had a crazy run during that point oh my god this leg looks horrible yeah nick jr had a crazy run when she was in charge and backyard games had, like was really really great and it was just so, man, the music was so good on that show. Like, international, super spy, oh my god. Like, bruh, come on, bruh. Come on, bruh. They, I don't think, they don't make kids shows like that no more. I mean, I haven't seen kids shows like that. Like, the only one I could really think of, like, a preschool show that, or a show that's targeted towards, like, young children that I've seen is, like, Bluey. But I haven't really even watched a lot of it. Uh, my girlfriend loves that show, Ryan Gold. <laughs> she does not play about that show. There's a lot of people who don't play about Bluey. And I'm like, bruh, I'm crying. 
because I think in Australia, shows that are targeted towards children, right, they can also be designed or they're designed for so families can watch it together, which is something that isn't a thing in the United States, which is why, like, they can talk about certain topics, that like you know shows a lot of shows in the u.s like at least for kids or aimed at little kids can't talk about which is why bluey blew up because people realize like, oh the people who are working this on the show like are people just like you and me and they have and they know references to things that we know like they're tapped in and like um like they're tapped in like they know a thing or two about you know just life and a lot of people love that show i haven't went out of my way to be like oh i gotta binge this because like it's not on the top of my list like you know what i'm saying like it's, it's, it's to me it's still like a show for kids first but like i respect it and i'm glad that like kids are growing up with it um you know speaking of sh shows that like you know carry the network like yeah like Backyardigans was great. Oh my god, her head's too small. No. Let me see if I can at least. I don't want to give her a double chin. I'm going to do like this and then just make her jacket bigger. Uh. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. Bonus nigga! Boo! <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> boo this nigga, boo! <laughs> boo this man! Ah, no! uh, it's almost close to forty minutes. Oh, that's so crazy. That's so crazy. That's so crazy. That's almost. I said it wasn't gonna be last long, but it's still long. Man, man no! boo! Fuck! <laughs> Look at me being a soundboard. Look at me being a soundboard. May, May. It's even worse because I'm looking at the board for this thing and I'm like, oh, people are drawing this. I see a drawing that's 10 times better than this. Oh, no, nah. no. Nah. I didn't even draw the chair. You, should I? You know what? Screw it. I, I, I guess it's going to be long as the original episode. I, I lied. I lied. I lied. I lied. I lied. Remember when I said something about that? I lied about it. I'm sorry. I lied. I, I lied. I simply lied. I lied. And that, you gotta be okay with that. You gotta be okay with the fact that I lied to you. And... Because and <laughs> there's zero structure. And I don't know if this of this series having, like, literally, like, not much structure is gonna be the blessing or a curse. But I feel like there's so many things that have a lot of structure on YouTube, on the internet, on the sh social media... Is like, where are the things without structure? Where are the things where people embrace the mistakes? Where are the things where people are like, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be lonely at Farmers on... Yo, where's the... Dot com. I wonder if somebody... Did, I wonder if somebody dead found a marriage on that site. That's gonna be crazy. They gonna have the most... They gonna have the most craziest, the most racist family ever. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> my guess me and your wife have something in common. <laughs> uh, sigh. No, I'm kidding. I mean, I, I, I hope the farmers on Farmers Only are not racist farmers. I, I hope. Like, when I think of farmers, what pops in my head is Stardew Valley. Not, not bad things. <laughs> um... Okay, back on track. We was talking about Gullah Gullah Island and childhood. Oh, I'll guess I'll, t I'll I'll have this topic there, and I'll just say this. Um, um, I'll just finish up with this. Um, so one of my favorite shows growing up, Oswald. Oh my God, I loved Oswald. That was that was my comfort show. Um, that was my comfort show, and I loved how I remember somebody posted this. Somebody said, like, I love Oswald because all the buildings that were in that show made it clear, like, the intentions of what those buildings were for were obvious. Yeah, 
if something was for um if something was for like a city or if something was for a certain um if something was for like a city or if a building meant something important then it was it was um it was obvious in the building design like if something was based off of music there would be something music related within the within the drawing or not drawing within the building so like if i can put it up on screen right here the if the building was a music building there would it would look like an instrument or something like that and like i kind of always thought that was an awesome design because it made it obvious what the building was for you didn't even have to know what the building is like you just look at it as like oh that's a bass or that's a, or that's a, like an instrument right there and that means that means that that building is something is like it, it's for something relating to music and people were able to point that out and i think that that was really smart design and that was and like that smart design was good enough to the point where like you know like like you know kids could pick it up and that's smart you know for people who are like you know there's a lot of people who are like oh kids shows are dumb or whatever it's like yeah cool but they were they had to like if you want to design something for like you know a younger audience you got to do a lot of smart things you can't just be like hey let's just coco melon it and just like give people colors and yell a bunch and make parents mad <laughs> nah you got to be smart about it and i think that's one thing that you know it would be cool not saying it's gonna happen but it would be cool to kind of like work on something and it kind of helps contribute to the intelligence of just like people like that would be awesome like the intelligence of people young and old you know that would be really cool but okay it's getting close to my time to work but this is today's sketch I tried <laughs> I tried drawing knives and yeah I, I tried y'all can see sorry for the background noise but i'm just gonna let it play as it is so yeah um so hopefully y'all enjoyed this episode <laughs> um i don't know if y'all can see i put a little bit of design on there i might like refine it more but it's like this is we're getting there we're getting there we don't we yeah, we're getting there <sighs> okay all right, so this has been episode one. This, like actually episode one of Sam's Sketch Stories. But it's simply episode two, if we count the pilot, but this is episode one. And yeah, um, hope to see y'all again soon. Y'all be safe, y'all be easy. Love y'all, peace.